Hi, my name is Will Shoemaker and I work for the City of Raleigh as a Traffic Calming Administrator and I will be going over this presentation with you today. Thank you for your patience as we work through COVID-19, working to coordinate this final design meeting. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out uh, through email or phone uh, after this uh, meeting. So, how did we get here? Someone along the street requested a traffic calming evaluation because they felt that the existing speed humps were not effective. We evaluated the street and found that uh, you had a qualifying score above 70. That is a min minimum qualifying score. And at the time of the evaluation, you were the highest ranked street on our, on our priority list. The highest ranked streets get the first option for the project. And then we came to you and offered the project. We have held the introductory meeting to explain the process. We balloted uh, the first time to see if you wanted to explore traffic calming and you passed. And we have had the first design meeting, a uh, street marking with open comment period. And now we are at the final design step at the final design meeting. The first ballot results, you barely met thresholds. So please make sure that you, you vote and you encourage everyone along the street to vote. The street participation hit the threshold on the mark. You had 50% of the people on the street participate, but you had a very high approval rating. So I am not worried about the approval rating, but please make sure that people participate. The same is, the, uh, is true about the greater neighborhood. You have to have a minimum percent of the greater neighborhood of 25%, you had a 26.5% participation rate, which is over the threshold, uh, but it is close. So please make sure that they are participating as well, as best as you can. Uh, again, that approval rating was extremely high at 82.39%. Uh, so you're, there's a lot of approval, but please, please, please make sure that, that you and your neighbors are participating. So what do we do now? We are going to review the final traffic calming design uh, and I'll present that and talk that through at the end of this presentation and it will also be posted online for you to review at your leisure. Uh, we will highlight the changes that were made and I'll walk through uh, from Capitol all the way to, to New Hope, all the way to the end, New Hope Church. Uh, you will be given an opportunity through feedback. We have an online portal set up where we'll, we can have an active chat back and forth um, as well as you can call call in, uh, especially for those that don't have internet access. Uh, we'll work to, to pull together all of those those comments that are made and make any changes, if any, any additional changes are necessary based on our feedback. And then we will ballot the, the greater neighborhood and the street again one final time to see if you want the project as designed, as presented. Uh, for the final design to be approved, we have to have the same threshold, the same balloting thresholds as before. We must get a minimum of 50% of the ballots from uh, the residents along the street returned to us. And of that, we need to have a 70% approval rating. As you remember, you had a 50% approval rating before and about a 94% approval rating. So we just need to make sure that people are, are returning the ballots. Uh, the the surrounding neighborhood, uh, we need a minimum of 25% of the ballots returned with a minimum of 60% of those in support of the project. If you'll remember, we had about 26, 27% of participation uh, with an 82, 83% approval rating. So again, part uh, participation is a little bit low on both of these things, so please encourage uh, people to, to participate. Uh, but your approval rating is generally extremely high. So the last step, if, if the ballot uh, is approved and you pass everything, would be the public hearing. We as city staff will request a public hearing with uh, the council. Um, you will receive notice of the, this and uh, your, your presence is not required. But if you feel strongly, we encourage you to come. It will be the first Tuesday uh, at the 7 p.m. Uh, time slot. So it will be the after work meeting. 
Um, again, you will receive a mailer notifying you of the actual date and the time and the place. Uh, with, with the way that things are going now, it will likely be a virtual meeting. So please pay attention to the mailer that will have further instructions. Um, council may give uh, a representative uh, the opportunity to speak. Uh, they may just take a quick poll of the people that have signed up to speak uh, to see if there's in favor or opposition. Uh, and then they will look at the, the information that we provide based on the ballot results and the final design, and they will make a final determination if, if they want to authorize the construction of the project. And if they do, at that point, we as staff will start pulling together the bid package, put it out to construction companies, and get it built as soon as possible. So now we're on to the design. I'd like to walk through the design with you. Again, this is going to be posted separately so you can pull it up and look at it yourself, uh, but just so that we can walk through from the beginning to the end, I'm gonna start on the top left corner at Capitol Boulevard and go from left to right on the top panel, then left to right on the bottom panel. Um, and there are two slides like this, so it'll be the same. Top left, left to right, bottom left, left to right. right so on Capitol Boulevard, you're turning on and heading right on Brentwood. As soon as you move from the industrial to the residential, we have our first chicane. This will create a, a S-type motion. Um, the, the two uh, opposing chicanes are placed so that two-way traffic can be maintained at all times, but it does take it down to the minimum lane widths. Um, so you pass through that first one, you go past uh, Lucerne, then you hit another chicane. Again, two-way traffic maintained at all, all times. And then we enter the first uh, neighborhood traffic circle at Bardwell, Bardwell Road. I want to reiterate, we are not moving curb lines. This is not impacting parking. It will be a monolithic, uh, so that means just a, a one single concrete pour in the center of the intersection that will force people instead of just being able to drive fast and straight through the intersection have to slow down and have a, a slight curve around so it stops people from going a straight line uh, and, and it will slow people down at intersection improving intersection safety and slowing cars down in general uh, that is true for every neighborhood traffic circle along uh, the whole street there will be no curve line movements and no further impacts to parking. Uh, again, uh, this is not going to restrict access in any ways. It just slows down access for the users of that intersection, increasing safety for everyone. Uh, left turns will not be restricted. Uh, you will go through and make a wider left turn to get around that. Uh, so it will slow down people from cutting the corner and shooting up and down Bardwell or any other street with with the neighborhood traffic circle being added. Um, so now we're leaving Bardwell. We hit uh, another set of chicanes. Then we go past Morton, hit another chicane. In both cases, again, two way traffic is maintained at all times. Uh, it just makes a little bit of an S motion so that people can't go in a straight line and people slow down. And these are designed to go uh, approximately the speed limit. So after these are installed, we expect uh, the street as a whole to function at around the 25 mile an hour speed limit that it currently is. As we go from the top panel to the bottom panel on the left to Fordham, because the skew, we could not place uh, another neighborhood traffic circle but we've decided to transition the intersection treatments a little bit to decrease driver predictability uh, because if drivers can't predict what's coming, they slow down. There's nothing unsafe about that. These are all designed uh, for the speed, but instead of someone getting used to the same design over and over and over again, we're transitioning between a few different devices so that it makes sure that driver speed stays low. So now at Fordham, we have a split pinch. 
So going from left to right, uh, the two the two sets of opposing cars will be pushed to the outside of the curb, but then as if they were to meet on the other side, they would be pinched together. This will uh, ha have kind of a, a meandering motion through the intersection. This will maintain two-way traffic at all times. And again, we are not moving curb lines with this at all. Uh, heading to the Glenridge intersection, we're putting another neighborhood traffic circle. The same is true as it was as Bardwell. We are not moving curb lines and it will not restrict traffic flow. It just slows cars down at the intersection uh, for all movements straight through, left or right. Uh, as we now pass through, we have transitioned to another uh, uh, pinch split. We mirrored that one as the uh, as opposed to the one at Fordham to give, uh, shake it up a little bit more. So this time drivers will be pinched together and then split as they go left to right. Uh, this way, there's a little bit more change in the design. Again, we're not moving curb lines and we are maintaining two lanes of traffic at all time. Uh, as we move to Julian, we've gotten a lot of comments from uh, various residents uh, about the nature of this intersection. And we've done a few evaluations. We've denied this multi-way stop in the past, but in light of a few recent events, we are recommending approval of the multi-way stop and we will be uh, installing and approving it in conjunction with this project. So at the top of that hill, this will now become a multi-way stop that as you hit the crest, every, every direction will need to stop look both ways and pull forward. So this will dramatically increase safety. It will increase, uh, decrease driver speeds as they go down the hill towards Barker. Um, and then it will also cause people going up the hill from Barker to slow down. And conversely, the same thing will be true around the curve. People coming up and around the curve will have to slow down and people going, cresting the hill and coming down will be at a much slower rate. So they won't be just shooting over the hill and coming down. So it will improve safety all around. Uh, transitioning to the next uh, two panels. I'm going to start again at the top left and go from left to right and then move to the bottom one next, but starting on the top left. Um, so because of the curve and the hill, we could not place any addi additional traffic calming treatments uh, between um, Julian and Carolyn. So that section, there's a stop and it comes down. Uh, but just right of, of Carolyn, we have um, a modified chicane that will push people. And then at the entrance to the Brentwood Park, it will push people across uh, the street there, uh, push, push the cars back. So there is that, that S motion that is true for all the chicanes that we are placing, but it's a little bit more spread out. And that's due to the road geometry in this location. It should be extremely effective at slowing people down, um, but it's just a little bit of a, a different mix of the same treatment. <clears throat> Excuse me. As we go left or right from uh, uh, Vision Court, we enter two more sets of chicanes uh, that again, not moving curb lines, um, maintaining two-way traffic is just creating that, that S-type pattern uh, to keep car speed slow. Uh, and then we hit the four-way stop at Ingram. Then as we leave Ingram, we're going to go to the bottom left and go left to right as well. You can see Ingram uh, on this panel as well. Um, and then from Ingram out to New Hope Church Road, we have three more sets of chicanes where this will create that serpentine motion the uh, rest of the way, maintaining two lanes of traffic at all time and, and really helping to slow people down uh, and not moving any curb lines uh, on these as well. One thing I would like to mention, all of the treatments that we are placing along here, along the entirety of Brentwood Road are going to be mountable curb so they will stick up just a couple inches. So if, if for whatever reason somebody does ride over it, 
they will feel a bump. It will be effectively the same thing as a speed bump and it will force them to slow down. Uh, but it, it's not going to be a catastrophic damage or cause any damage to the vehicle um, because it's, it's rollover mountable curb uh, and designed that if somebody hits it, it's not going to be uh, a bad news for the structure of their car. Again, it will force them to slow down because they're hitting essentially a speed bump, but it's not going to cause any damage. Uh, some benefits, the fire department, we've been working very closely with them. They will have the ability to turn on their silent sirens and maneuver through the middle of these a little bit more easily, uh, where they'll still have to slow down slightly, but they're not going to have to go over every single speed hump like they currently have to. So the response times will generally be higher. Um, also, if there are delivery trucks or large moving trucks, there shouldn't be any real truck traffic, but any local trucks, um, they are not going to be detrimentally impacted because again, it's, it's rollover mountable curb that they will be able to, uh, to roll their tires over this and still have full access. So with all of these treatments, they are designed to slow down cars, slow down the flow of traffic. And they're designed to do that to get about a mid 20 mile an hour speed. Um, but they are also designed to have a limited impact on the larger vehicles and the or have the potential for a, a smaller impact on the larger vehicles and a smaller impact on emergency services that can easily roll over these and maneuver through using both lanes that won't be necessarily the same case because of opposing traffic volumes as the uh, single occupancy vehicles whenever you're, you're, you're just normally driving and normally using the roadway. Um, here is just another slide where it's a little bit smaller. Uh, instead of the four cells, we combined each of the two cells into one long and it's just a top and bottom. Uh, this gives you the full length of the project. Again, starting the top left, going from left to right. As soon as you leave the commercial and enter the residential, we hit two sets of chicanes. We hit a neighborhood traffic circle where it is not restricting access, not moving curb lines, and not restricting any parking. Uh, it will just slow cars down. Then we hit, uh, after leaving that treatment, we hit two sets of chicanes and we come to Fordham where we have a split pinch device that will cause people to slow down through Fordham. Uh, then as we leave and go to Glen Ridge, we have another neighborhood traffic circle where again, not restricting access, not moving curb lines, not further restricting parking. Uh, as we leave that to Barker, we have a mirrored uh, uh, pinch split, the opposite of what is at Fordham, but the same treatment style. Again, this will slow people down as they're going um, left to right or right to left. Going up the hill to Julian, we are going to install a multi-way stop because of site distance and crash history information. Uh, moving from the top right to the bottom left to the bottom panel. We're leaving Julian going around the curve because people are stopped. They won't be able to take that hill as fast. Uh, just right of Carolyn, we have a modified chicane that will transition uh, through and make that park entrance a little bit safer. Everyone going a little bit slower. Uh, between Vision and Ingram, we have another two sets of chicanes um, coming up to the multi-way stop at Ingram. Uh, then after leaving that, between Ingram and New Hope Church Road, we have three more sets of chicanes that get you to the, the end of the road. Uh, this, this design is designed to go mid-20s. The treatments are placed at approximately equal distance along the whole route, so it, it, it is designed to keep vehicle speed slow consistent and safe. For any questions or comments, please use the link uh, to the comment page listed on the website. We have created a, an interactive portal where you can write responses, write questions, and we as staff will answer. We're trying to recreate that in-person discussion that we would have at a normal meeting. Um, this way, you can ask questions, we can respond, and then the group as a whole will be able to see and participate as well. Um, for those uh, of your, your neighbors that do not have internet access, we have provided 
uh, an alternate route where they can call in and discuss this with us. Um, but please encourage any of your neighbors that you know uh, that do not have internet connectivity to reach out to us in a certain capacity so that our voices can still be heard. Uh, we want to hear from you. We want to make sure that this project is effective and is, is Brentwood approved. Uh, that is the goal. Uh, we, we look forward to finishing this process with you getting this uh, design approved, having you as the on-street participants and you as the neighborhood approving this, getting before council for them to authorize construction, and then us getting this built as soon as possible. Thank you for all of your hard work as we work through this process with you and we look forward to the conclusion and getting this built.